In this video tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to take a plain and simple spoon bowl and turn it into a gorgeous ring. We're going to start out with a spoon bowl that was textured with a plate that went through the rolling mill. Keep an eye on our channel for future videos as I will be doing one on how to use the rolling mill to add texture. So I am taking a concho and I'm doing some sweat soldering with that. Put some solder on the back of that, heat it up till it just melts. Um, always add your flux first and I use Mighty Flux in this, uh, in this case here and I've drawn the outline on the spoon bowl so I know exactly where I need to set it when I go to solder. And I have used medium solder for attaching the concho to the spoon bowl. So heating up the spoon bowl thoroughly and not spending a lot of time on the concho because the concho is a very thin piece and extremely easy to melt so you don't want to focus your heat in that area. You want to focus your heat around the concho. I have everything sitting up on top of a new concepts uh, titanium clip and I'll put the link to below as to where you can get those. It allows the heat to get around the piece better. So I've taken the piece out of the pickle, scrubbed it up with a brass brush and now we've headed to the bender where we're going to bend. Now, you don't always put your components on prior to bending. Um, I'll do it if I feel comfortable that the components that I'm using are not going to fall off. So, for example, if you're going to use something like a 3D butterfly, it's not something I would put on prior to bending because bending would end up crushing the butterfly. So since the concho was already flat, I had no problem in going ahead and putting it on first. As long as it is attached very well to the spoon, to the spoon bowl with solder, you won't have any problem with it popping off. And so I like to do the bending um, on a rubber block when I do these types of things, just so I don't damage the embellishments. So I have a copper bezel cup and I'm using a half round ring file to put um, basically like a, a channel in the bottom and that's going to match the shape of the spoon bowl itself as a ring and it will sit on there rather than just teetering on there. It will sit on there and fit on there. So we're gonna sweat solder this piece. And this time I'm using Easy Solder. And I'm adding a bunch of chips to the back. And I'm gonna heat that. And it doesn't take very long. And let the solder flow on the back there. And I'm gonna take the piece and I'm gonna set it on top of the ring and center that. Heat the entire ring thoroughly. Again, you're heating a small component here, so you don't want to spend a lot of time with your heat on the component itself. That also includes that concha that you've added, because even though it is attached to the spoon bowl now, it is still a delicate embellishment, so you don't want to put a lot of heat on there. If you see those parts really getting red, pull your heat back. Something that you learn over time is to when to pull the heat back. Everything's getting to where it's glowing now. The uh, spoon bowl itself, that's when the solder is flowing. And just testing, make sure it's attached. And it looks like we're good. Just adding a little extra heat just to make sure. 
went into the pickle pot, got all cleaned up. Now we're going to do some liver of sulfur patina. Just put a little bit of liver of sulfur in some very warm water. And I'm going to let that soak until it gets as dark as I would like. You can check out one of our new videos that deals with etching and patina for more explanation on patina. I'm mixing up some baking soda in some cool water. And once the uh, color has been achieved, I dip that in there and that stops the uh, darkening process. Dry everything off and using my favorite brass brush, I'm going to remove the patina on the high areas while leaving it in the low areas. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know I really like the brass brush. It just does a great job for so many things. There are all kinds of tools out there to help hold pieces while you're working on them. But I know a lot of people don't have um, excessive amounts of tools. So I'm trying to show you some basic and simple things that you can do with the least amount of tools. So I'm putting some white compound on a little buff on my rotary tool and just going around and starting to polish up. Now, obviously, the more you polish, the more of that patina you're going to remove. So if you ended up removing too much, you can always wash the piece up and put it back in the patina, darken it up, and then try again. You do want to make sure the piece is clean before you put it in the patina because patina does not do well over top of compound or grease or fingerprints or anything like that. So you want to have your piece really clean. Best thing is to take it directly out of the pickle pot. So now that the ring is all complete, as far as the construction, we're going to set the stone. So I've placed an 8 by 10 oval turquoise and it has copper veining in it, which goes well with the copper bezel cup. And doing the setting of the stone. So I'm using a prong pusher and pushing the prongs north, south, east, and west. And once that has secured the stone, then I'll go all the way around pushing the prongs in and snugging them up against the stone. Now I'm using a burnisher going around and smoothing all those prongs down nice and smooth and it also makes the bezel shiny and just touching it up a bit more and there you have it so on the second bowl i'm going to be doing some metal stamping there's just so many ways to create texture and design and and um, in style and my goal here is to show you a number of different things but by no means a definitive guide into what you can do there are a number of new videos on spoon bowl work so be sure to check out the other ones so i've drawn around my concho so i know where it's going to sit and I am starting doing the stamping. This is a punch from a dapping set, the smallest one. And now I'm going to use an Impress Art Mandala set. I often, more often than not, never really have ideas or thoughts about where I want to go, I just start doing things. If I like it, I continue. If I don't, well, it goes into scrap and or into a project box where it will be looked at again in the future. You get your best stamping against a steel block. It's a nice firm surface. We also have metal stamping tools for the arbor press but for this video i decided to do 
the stamping by hand. So just going over and making sure I have everything deep enough. Scrub that all up real quick with the brass brush. Take a look, make sure everything looks like it's even as far as the depth of each of the stamps. Lining up my concho, see how that looks. Gone ahead and soldered that on there. I'm not showing every single step for every piece just because I don't want to make this video excessively long. So I'm trying to show you different things with each one. And that went into the pickle pot, scrubbing that all up with the brass brush. So this is a solder cutting plier and I am actually using fine silver wire here and we're going to make little silver balls. So with the wire, or excuse me, with the solder pliers, all the chips are gonna be the same size. So if you're looking to make balls all the same size, that's a great tool to guarantee all your pieces are gonna be the same. Then I cut additional pieces of varying lengths to make little balls of uh, larger and, and um, other sizes. Fine silver does not tarnish like sterling does. And it also balls up very nicely when you're making the balls. It makes perfect little spheres with flat bottoms. And so you're just gonna use your torch, go all the way around till all of the little balls have melted into their round shape. And then they're gonna go into the pickle pot. You just take your block over to the pickle pot and tip them in there. So I put them through a strainer and now I'm putting them into the stacking jars. Now these stacking jars, I have made holes in the bottom of each of the jar and the holes are larger all the way down to the bottom one and they are progressively get smaller. So when you put the balls in and shake it, the smallest ones will drop to the bottom and then they will sort on the way up. I've taken some paste solder and the little balls, the size, the smallest size, the ones that were made with the solder uh, plier, the plier um, wire cutter. Yeah, and I've placed them where I would like them. And heating everything and waiting for the solder to flow and attach the little balls to the bowl. Back into the pickle pot and out and scrub everything up with the brass brush. I can see that I should have left it in the pickle pot a little bit longer because I do have a bunch of debris that would have, uh, would have come off if I had left it in the pickle pot longer. Okay, again, I don't hesitate too much to do bending with components on there as long as they're small and they're not going to get crushed. Um, if they're on there well enough, you don't have to worry about them falling off during bending. And if one or two of the little balls falls off, you can always solder them back on. So here I am sweat soldering again and I have put a little bit of a curve in the back of the copper bezel cup so it fits the shape of the ring. Torching the bezel cup until the solder flows, just until it flows. And then I'm going to line it up on top of the ring and hit it again with the torch. I'm using extra easy solder at this point. 
So I used medium solder to attach the concho. The uh, paste solder is easy, and now I have extra easy going underneath the bezel to attach it to the ring. You can see the silver flowing out from underneath the bezel cup, then you know that the uh, solder has flowed. Back in the pickle pot, out, getting all scrubbed up with the brass brush. I like to do this pretty much every step of the way, just so I see things more clearly. And I'm going to use some white compound on a buff on one of my rotary tools, and I'm going to go in there and clean that all up. And you have the little balls and things. Sometimes it's better to do the uh, polishing on a rotary tool rather than on the bench buffer because the bench buffer is so much more powerful and aggressive. You can damage your components. So sometimes I just choose to do this with the rotary tool. I've got the abrasive buff on my rotary tool and this is my preferred choice of uh, attachment for cleaning the inside. And we're gonna set the stone here in the ring. Same thing as before, north, south, east, west, pressing the prongs in to hold the stone in place. Once the that is done, then you're gonna go back all the way around and fill in. And it's kind of a rocking motion, pressing straight and then tipping up to match the curve of the stone. And then using the burnisher to make sure those prongs are lying flat up against the stone and it also gives a shine to the bezel. I really like these little copper bezel cups along with these turquoise stones because the stones have copper veining in them and I think they really make a nice match for one another. And hitting it again with the brass brush. Now, if you wanted to tumble this, you would want to do that before you put the stone in. These rings are great because they're adjustable. Any questions, please share to post them, and I'll do my best to answer them.